now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You're born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Good Saturday afternoon out there, everyone. Welcome to Muskogee Vision. I'm your host, Jason Salzman. And this week, we have, in its entirety, the 2019 State of the Nation Address from Muskogee Creek Nation Principal Chief James Floyd. Second Chief um, Lewis Hicks, National Council Speaker Lucian Tiger III, um, Second Speaker David Hill, um, National Council members, and um, Supreme Court and District Court judges, uh, traditional leaders, uh, church leaders, MECOs, community and government leaders. We welcome you here this morning. Um, and um, we have recognized a royalty already this morning. Just want to recognize them again and thank them for being here today as they represent our nation as ambassadors uh, for us all over the world. <clears throat> I welcome um, our fellow Muskogee citizens as well that live with either within or outside our boundaries in both those in attendance as well as those who may be viewing online this morning. In preparing um, to speak to you today, I took time to reflect um, on our past, our present, and to look forward to our future. And want to remind everybody, you know, this year is a significant year in our history. It marks the 40th anniversary of the ratification of our Constitution, which reaffirmed us as a sovereign nation. The preamble to our Constitution reads, under the guidance of the Almighty God, our Creator, we the people of the Muskogee Creek Nation, um, to, pr to promote unity, to establish um, justice, and to secure ourselves and our children, the blessings of freedom, um, and local self-governance in continued relations with the United States of America uh, do ordain and establish the Constitution for the Muskogee Creek Nation. Since 1979, and the affirmation of, the national, uh, of our Constitution, our, our nation has grown from approximately 7,000 citizens to now more than 86,000. I remember that when I started working for the nation in 1978, um, we had only a few permanent buildings on this campus. In total, I think we probably had less than 100 employees. Today, we employ more than 5,000 people and have an annual payroll exceeding $169 million. We started back then only with a plan for future economic development. A recent economic impact study um, found that our total economic impact in the state of Oklahoma is more than 8,000 jobs and totals more than $874 million. This year, uh, I've been reminded that the decisions made in the past have had a profound impact on our sovereignty, and that the decisions that we are making today will do the same to secure our future, especially now with the uncertainty in the United States government. In looking back, one of the most important decisions that I've appreciated as principal chief in, is that in 1990, our people wisely chose to create a permanent fund. And that has grown to now more than $372 million. I've seen the value it creates uh, in helping to provide critical services for our people and financial security for our nation. Interest earned on the permanent fund has been used by our national council to appropriate money to provide grants to schools, vans for chartered communities, 
funding for churches and ceremonial grounds, and for utility assistance to our citizens, just to name a few things that has helped. The value in growing the permanent fund base is that it strengthens our financial security. Our credibility and our credibility with the financial and business community. As your principal chief, uh, I repeat my promise that I made to you when I was elected um, not to borrow or decrease from our base, but to increase it and to increase the interest that we can apply to our vital needs. We must keep this foundation in place for a strong future for our nation. In the late 1970s, we were the first tribe in the country to own and operate a community hospital. In fact, uh, we were highlighted uh, as a success in the PBS show Nova for what we had done. We operated that hospital in the same location until last year when we completed the new, and completed and opened the new Creek Nation Community Hospital in Okima. In a time when rural health care facilities are decreasing, uh, we made an investment and have increased our ability to provide services to our people. In the 1960s, the Indian Clinic at Eufaula was a mere storefront in the little downtown of the, in Eufaula. I'm pleased to say that now, through a joint venture with the Indian Health Service, the nation recently opened the new 70,000 square foot Eufaula Indian Health Center. In addition to expanding services, our nation's investment has created 37 new well-paying jobs. It's important to note that the Eufaula Indian Health Center is located in a county that over the past few years has had the highest unemployment rate in the state of Oklahoma. And we are now the largest employer in that county. As we all know in health, it has not been an easy journey in the last few years. When I came into office, we faced a, a huge financial and operational deficit in our health care system uh, that threatens its stability. Um, Thanks to the innovation and hard work of the staff of the health department, I'm glad to report that our health care system is financially sound. We can now place a greater focus on programs that will improve the overall health of our communities. We had to make tough decisions to get there. But now it's rewarding to know that we did the right thing. It was right to serve our people and protect our sovereignty in doing so. That's the greatest promise that I believe I can make to you. Over the past few years, we've also had opportunities to show the strength of our Muscogee Creek Nation um, in a larger sense. Last month, we celebrated the passage of amendments to the Stigler Act. <clears throat> I'm pleased uh, that we have placed a high priority in getting the Stigler Act amended. I, we placed a high priority in fighting the injustice of the Stigler Act um, when I became Principal Chief and we're pleased that we can report that we've been successful because the Act unfairly set a blood quantum, uh, blood quantum requirement that to inherit restricted land only, and then only apply to the five tribes you had to have a blood quantum in place. Since 1947, in the enactment of the Stigler Act, Muscogee Creek Nation has lost more than 95% of our restricted land. It took many trips to Washington to meet with congressional leaders from across the country over the three, past three years, and the combined effort of the five tribes to get these amendments passed. In the United States Senate, they allowed only one tribe to testify on the support, to support the passage of this bill, and I'm pleased to, that they selected the Muscogee Creek Nation, and I was pleased that I was able to be there to speak to them directly and present our testimony on the Stigler Act, the injustices, and what needed to be changed to correct them. Now, with the passage of the act, the children of our Muscogee citizens 
have the same right of inheritance as every other tribe in the United States. I'm, proud, I'm very proud of our realty department for the hard work they did in assisting in this effort and give my support to them as they lead and communicate with our citizens in understanding how to claim those rights under the Stigler Act. So my big thanks to you for doing so. Thank you. One of the most important roles a government plays is protecting our citizens. Um, I am proud to report that last month, under the Violence Against Women Act, we demonstrated our sovereignty as we pros successfully prosecuted our first non-native offender. I want everyone, citizen and non-citizen alike, to know we are serious about combating domestic violence and we will take every action to the fullest extent of the law to eliminate it in the Muskogee Creek Nation. <clears throat> this conviction was a combined effort, a successful effort by a number of, of groups. We had highly trained light horse officers um, that investigated and prepared this case, prosecutors in the Attorney General's office who worked hard, and collectively they worked together to get this prosecution in place. So I want to thank them this morning for their hard work and having us have this prosecution and to establish us as a nation who will continue to uphold the law in this area. They demonstrate the strength of our sovereign nation. Now, in addition to meeting state requirements for training, our light horse are attending a federal training center in New Mexico. Recently, a light horse officer graduated at the top of the class as platoon leader and he earned an expert marksman award and is the top shot, shot of the entire class and also expert driver. I would like to recognize uh, Light Horse Officer Brandon Jackson this morning for representing us in such a distinguished manner. Thank you, Officer Jackson. Our citizens are very fortunate to have highly trained officers serving them. So I want to thank you, the other members of the Light Horse, for your leadership, your dedication to protecting us. Also, the importance of the strength of our nation was crucial in demonstrating our sovereignty recently in the Murphy case that is being considered um, at the United States Supreme Court level. In November, as we sat near the front of the Supreme Court, escorted proudly by our Light Horse Chief and Deputy Chief, I was deeply moved as the attorneys detailed significant accomplishments of our Muscogee Creek Nation. By exerting our strength, we are now being respected throughout the world. When faced with the decision to join this case, it was not easy. We could have stood by and allowed our sovereignty and our fate to be determined by someone else. And that would have been the easy way out. But instead, we have decided to take the lead in making sure that our sovereignty is up upheld and we wait the decision by the United States Supreme Court. <clears throat> I would, um, excuse me while I grab my notes here again. I thought of all the hard work that's gone on in this case and all the leaders of the Muscogee Nation in the past and the ways that they honorably um, have served in their roles and I want to thank them for that because it's built to where we are today. So I'm going to know the former leaders of our nation. Uh, 
I also want to turn to talk about what I believe are the greatest examples of honorable service, and that is from our veterans. I've always appreciated that we honor our veterans, and I'm pleased that we demonstrate that on the world stage in November. A tribal veteran traveled from Oklahoma to France to honor our fallen citizen soldiers at the 100th commemoration of the end of World War I. He participated in ceremonies and placed United States and Muscogee Creek Nation flags at the headstones of our citizens who were killed in action. <clears throat> now, our fallen will always have a piece of home with them. John Sloan, Vietnam veteran, uh, attended on our behalf and participated in the ceremonies. John, I'd like for you to stand and let's recognize you this morning for your continued dedication. Thank you for representing the nation in that important ceremony. But, oh. <clears throat> I've reported on our humble beginnings and a resilient journey, but now I want to report on our nation's future. In 2017, we initiated an ambitious effort to develop a master plan to guide our expansion in the next 20 years in this area. We worked with a highly respected architectural firm that included the Muscogee Creek Nation citizen, Jason Holoby. We have worked to get employee and citizen input as we have developed the plan. While construction will not occur immediately, I'm glad to report that we have a plan. As we uh, gain even more citizen input, we hope to break ground on the, on the buildings uh, in 2020. Our plan is to secure funding that will not draw from the permanent fund or high interest loans. So we're working through a process of obtaining resources for this project at the lowest possible cost. In the lobby as you walked in, hopefully you saw the results of much, uh, that detailed much of the proposal, including expansion of the main campus here, because um, we have to replace our existing 40 plus year old buildings and plan to, to better need the, meet the needs of our citizens by consolidating all member services in one location and, and up on this, on, on this campus. We also have a plan for the country club property that includes a museum and cultural center, center with space for preservation and display of our historical archives. At the Omniplex, we included needs for, uh, for our, our annual festival, new venues for sporting events, a larger con concert venue, uh, a large expo center. We've worked to improve the wheelchair accessibility and expanded parking areas. With, his, with the support of the National Council, this past year, we made an investment to upgrade the dome, added the new gym floor and stadium seating that will now seat 1,600 people. <clears throat> this week, that investment is paying off as we're hosting the Okmulgee County Basketball Tournament. And by all the comments that I've heard, and I believe others here, it's been a very positive experience for them. And beginning at 5 p.m. today, we'll host the finals. And so we want to build up on that success in our plan. I also want to announce this morning that we've been chosen to host next month um, the Oklahoma State Secondary School Association Regional Basketball Playoff at the Dome. And so we will continue to build on what we've done to secure our future in that area as well as sports. I know that we've had a long journey to get to where we are right now, um, but we will continue to work 
and have a, maintain a focus on our future. I want to talk about our youth because they represent our future. And our Muskogee Youth Council is a representation that Muskogee people are serving um, us in many ways. They're here today and they're serving as ushers. As a group, they've completed more than 1,000 hours of community service and collected almost $1 million in college scholarship funds. Members of the Youth Council have won first place in the Center for Native American Youth Creative Native Art Contest, received six group and individual awards at the Oklahoma Native Language Fair, including first place in traditional song. They've completed the Humanity in Action Fellowship in Copenhagen, Denmark, and they currently are serving with National Congress of American Indians on the Wilma Mankiller Fellowship. So I'd like the Muskogee youth in the tents today to stand and let's recognize you. In addition to our Youth Council, we have other citizens um, working to do great things. <clears throat> Clint Summers was recently selected as University of Tulsa College of Law's 2018 uh, Student of the Year. <clears throat> Clint has participated in, higher, in our higher education department's undergraduate, postgraduate, and doctoral funding to complete his degrees. Clint has been published in the American Indian Law Journal and has secured positions um, as a clerk for a U.S. District Judge and then as a clerk in the United States Supreme uh, Court of Appeals in the Fifth Circuit. So I'd like to recognize the efforts of Clint Summers as an example of our youth. Clint, would you please stand? Thank you. To better prepare our youth for a secure future, we have started financial literacy trainings. Through a partnership with the Tinker Federal Credit Union, our youth have received life skills training from certified financial counselors on budgeting and financial decision making, along with classes on credit management and the dangers of predatory lending. I'm proud to announce today that we've had 1,000 youth participate in these trainings. In addition, we've implemented financial training for our children in Head Start. Research has shown that children develop money habits as young as seven years old. So we're reaching out to them early. Our Head Start program is also incorporating our native language in these trainings. So they're learning financial management as they're also learning our language. So thank you very much for those who are working on that effort. Through our journey, from our resilient past, uh, we look for a strong and bright future. I'd like to acknowledge someone in particular whose actions represent the best of our nation, Darren DeLon. Darren works in our Muskogee Media Department and recently, during a recording of a live radio show, a guest started having health difficulties. Using training Darren learned through employment with the nation, he recognized the symptoms and started CPR. Because of Darren's quick thinking and the ability to act when needed, he saved a life. Yesterday, we presented Darren with this plaque to recognize his actions. So Darren, if you would, would like to take a second and recognize you and thank you for what you did.
Thank you, Darren. And keep up the good work. Our nation has come a long way. Over the past 40 years, we have fought to maintain our sovereign government. Many of you know that we started with few resources, but we've always had our greatest resources, which are our people. It is your strength that flows through us and your struggles to overcome that inspire us today. It is our people that have always kept us moving forward. As we have recognized today, we have citizens we've recognized such as John Sloan, um, who still continues to honor those he served with in, in service to the United States, Officer Brandon Jackson of the Light Horse, Darren DeLon, uh, Clint uh, Summers, and our Youth Council, who represent us in a very positive way and set the course for us in the future and set a standard for us in the future. I hope that you can see some of the reasons why it is so important that we always maintain our focus on strengthening our sovereignty and serving our people. I could um, go on and tell you many more stories, but I know in, in respect for the time, I'd like to end. And I'd like to end by expressing my sincere gratitude uh, to my the cabinet members of my administration for the hard work they put in every day in serving our people. So I'd like for our cabinet members to stand that are present this morning. Thank you. And I also want to thank all the Muskogee Creek Nation staff. So all the employees of the Muskogee Creek Nation, would you stand and be recognized? And again, in conclusion, I want to thank you for allowing me to serve as your principal chief and, um, and time to speak to you today. Mr. Speaker, a report that you know, the state of Muskogee Creek Nation is strong and that our future is even brighter. Mado, thank you. And again, that was the 2019 State of the Nation Address for the Muskogee Creek Nation from Principal Chief James Floyd, given at the regular council session this last Saturday, and that's available on YouTube. You can watch it as many times as you want and share it with folks that would like to see that. Well, that'll do it for this week, and everybody out there, have a great one. We'll see you next time. I'm Jason Salzman here, and this has been Muskogee Vision.